In the 21st century, the world is experiencing difficult times. No matter how one chooses to look at things or how much of a positive attitude one tries to adopt, there is still a great deal of uncertainty amongst most people in regards to the future, and many of those who have taken the time to investigate and who are aware of such things see the situation as hopeless, and many feel powerless in the face of the new world order leviathan that is ever more quickly engulfing our civilization. Yet the reality is that people are not powerless at all. In fact, quite the opposite is true, for there is a very simple and effective way to stop the new world order in its tracks. Let's be honest about it. The system that we live under is corrupt. It's rotten to the core. It's about self-service and it's run by psychopaths and criminals. And everyone knows it. And they get away with it. And the world continues along in this dysfunctional manner simply because we let it continue. So stop going along with it. Understand that the way to bring about real change in the world is through non-compliance to the system. And many ask, what is non-compliance? Does this mean I should quit my job and burn all my money? And the answer to any questions such as these is no, of course not. Non-compliance is about doing the right thing. It's about disconnecting yourself from the system, being responsible for your thoughts, your actions and your intentions, and it lies very much in realizing your own potential. Do what is right in all that you do. Realize your connection to others and think humanitarianly rather than economically. Don't base your life on the collection of useless trinkets or on social status. Do what is right in your heart. And doing what is right, understanding whether what you are doing is the right thing or not, is not something you have to decide. It's something that you already know in your heart if you would just look and be honest with yourself. If you are doing something that you need to justify to yourself within a dialogue, then chances are that you're doing the wrong thing and are simply trying to talk yourself into allowing it. You know this. Knowledge of it is within your heart. You just have to look and you will find it. Understand how the energy works. Be aware of the energy you are drawing into yourself, of what you are manifesting with that energy, and what type of energy you are contributing back to the energy supply for others to draw upon. This is truly how it works. Realize your potential as a human being. Forget the imaginary restraints that have been placed before you by the academic system and the limitations you are told exist by science and religious teachings, and look at the whole spectrum. Because the fact is that each of these institutions functions only to compartmentalize knowledge. Each exists for the very purpose of limiting the scope of your understanding by locking you into a contained and restrictive paradigm. And until people begin to look beyond such imposed limitations, open their minds and make the connections between religion and science, they are never going to make the connections to themselves, to this reality, and to the Creator that men have called God. But to do this, and to gain a real understanding, requires both acceptance and self-responsibility. It requires that people act in a proactive manner. There are many who find such things difficult, those who would prefer someone else to come and save them. Yet such people desire the impossible, for they desire to be delivered into salvation and utopia without ever understanding the true nature of their world or even themselves. And this is very often due to the limitations of an imposed belief system. Now you can talk to those who embrace religion. You can sit them down and you can talk to them about God and about Satan and they will converse with you eagerly and they all very much believe in such things. But as soon as you put things like science, galactic laws, numerology or astrotheology into the equation, many just shut off. They say it's God's will and they sit back and they wait for Armageddon. And some will even go so far as to say the pursuit of such higher understandings is demonic. And though on a different level, it's the same with many scientists. They understand the mechanics of it all, but many refuse to add spirituality into the picture and only adhere to laws that can be applied on a mechanical level. 
Both approaches are inherently flawed because neither will consider the arguments of the other and both refuse to take into account, allow for and even embrace the true nature of feelings and emotions. Yet feeling and emotion is the key to it all. Feeling and emotion is the language that is used to create and to mold reality. Feeling and emotion is the true nature of prayer and it is also the language by which man may communicate with the Creator. What is the true nature of that divine entity that man has named God? The Creator is the intelligence that underlies all, the fabric that permeates all realities. The Creator exists as one, a single consciousness that is in essence a duality, both male and female, the Alpha and the Omega. This is why in every religious text in which the Creator speaks, it is in the plural. This is the nature of the Divine Matrix that connects all things, the consciousness of which we are all expressions. As self-awareness grows and realization of one's connection to this consciousness awakens within each person, institutionalized religions seek to externalize this force and suggest that God is something external from man, a benefactor that is looking down on us. Many so-called New Age religions attempt to internalize it and suggest that God is yourself, that God lies within. But both of these understandings are erroneous. Every being in creation, both you and I and every other person in this reality, is an eternal living soul expression of God, of the consciousness of the Alpha and Omega, just as every soul is male female in nature. Yet despite this, our world, our species and our consciousness is today rampant with division and distrust that is wholly illusionary and has been deliberately engineered into being. The manufactured creation of an institutionalized society. This has been going on for a very long time and it has reached extreme proportions over the last century. During this time, man as a species has been shifted so far from his center and so far away from true reality that we have almost completely lost our humanity. We have been trained to be totally dependent upon the system. We have been robbed of our will, of our self-esteem and our independence. We have been trained to believe whatever the TV tells us and to think that image, social status and the collecting of meaningless trinkets is the meaning of life. But most importantly, through television, the mass media and through the ingestion of brain inhibiting toxins such as fluoride, we have been robbed of our power to think critically and objectively. And most dangerously of all, through these same machinations, we have been robbed of our life skills. This last fact alone has placed mankind in the most vulnerable position of our entire recorded history. For at this point in time, we are, almost each and every one of us, completely dependent upon a corrupt corporate apparatus for our survival. An apparatus that places profits before people. It has nothing at all to do with the true nature of man, of our place upon and relationship to this earth or to each other. Yet we depend upon it for our food, for our housing, for our information and even for our entertainment. It tells us what to do, where to go, what to look like, what to eat, how to dress, how to act and what to think about the world and about each other. And we obey it while the world around us is raped. And if this corporate apparatus were suddenly to fail or shut down, every supermarket shelf in the world would be almost completely empty and every resource we take for granted as being on hand for our daily lives would be depleted in a matter of just three days. And what then? Because if a person from almost any level of modern society were suddenly to be left alone to fend for themselves, there are very few who would be able to survive. It is of the utmost importance that mankind wake up to the reality of this and to the true situation the world is facing. Because the future we are allowing to be created, and to which we are also allowing ourselves to literally become completely enslaved to and totally dependent upon, is not going to be a future worth living in. 
What is required to fix it is for people to re-establish themselves as human beings and get back in touch with their humanity. Take control of your own life. Start growing your own food and take responsibility for yourself and realize and accept your connection to others. 120 years ago, a situation such as the one we are now in would have been unthinkable. So why then is it so prevalent today? It's because it has been done by design. The reason is that we are being set up. And I don't tell people this in order to scare them. I tell people simply because it is important they become aware of it, as it is a situation that can still be rectified once people become aware of the truth. Now there are many who choose to blame different groups for this. They claim Zionism is to blame, or it's the Bilderberg group, or it's the international banksters and the money system that's the root of the problem. Yet the truth is that all of these things are merely differing mechanisms of control that are all interconnected. Certainly the money system is the head of the snake that's used to control it all, including the people. But ultimately, it's all one system, and all of these mechanisms are merely different layers of the same onion. They are differing levels in the hierarchy, and different arms of the same octopus. Both Zionism and the money system, and any other visibly secret organizations, are merely playing their own specific part. This conspiracy runs very deep. It goes back to ancient Egypt and even beyond. Step back and just look at the bigger picture.